Hello learners, my name is Dr. Nidhi Singh, I am Assistant Professor in Geography and today we will be learning about dynamic surface of the earth. So what is the aim of this session? So in this session we will be learning about endogenetic forces, effects on transforming landforms, isostasy, views on isostasy and then plate tectonics and continental drift theories, isostasy. What is isostasy? It is derived from the word isostios. It is derived from the word isostasios. It's a Greek word and it means state of being in balance. So there is great difference in height on the earth's surface. Mountains are very high while plains are, uh, plateaus are lower and then plains are very low. So, earth is rotating and keeping perfect balance among all these features of different height. In this manner, earth is in isostatic equilibrium. So, isostasy can be explained with two viewpoints as you can see in the picture. Uh, one is Aries view of uh, isostasy which uh, says there is same density but there is varying depth of various features on the earth surface by Pratt's view which says there is different density but there is same depth. Now first of all we will be dealing with Aries view on isostasy. Aries was a geologist and he said that density of different columns of on the earth surface is the same. So different columns what do we mean by that? That is plains, plateaus and mountains etc. So according to Aries the density of all these features are the same. So there is uniform density, so there is uniform density with varying thickness. So according to Airy, earth's crust is made up of lighter material of silica and aluminium which is known as CR, we have already discussed in previous sessions. Then the lesser dense layer is floating on the denser material that is SEMA. So it assumed that sialic crust is floating over SEMA. The crustal layer or the sialic layer has uniform density. This was assumed by Airy, but there is varying depth of column length. The columns are projecting down into asthenosphere depending upon the proportion of the columns. So Airy's view you can clearly see in the diagram. He used wooden blocks to uh, explain his uh, viewpoint here wooden pieces of uniform density was taken and this was dipped in water. So uh, according to Airy, all the blocks had same density. So they got immer immersed differently in proportion to their sizes. So longer columns were immersed more into the water while the shorter columns had uh, lesser depth in the water as you can see in the figure. Now Aries view uh, if we take into consideration the earth surface you can see in the picture uh, three types of uh, columns or features uh, is shown mountains, plains and plateaus when immersed in water or when it is immersed uh, in, on the, in the, uh, inside the earth in asthenosphere. So uh, mountains they go deeper than as compared to plateaus and then as compared to plains. Now according to Aries viewpoint then so the root beneath uh, Mount Earth would be approximately 70,784 meters below sea level. So on this ground Airy was criticized because if this uh, at this, this depth if Mount Everest is uh, um, floating or it is rooted beneath the earth surface it will melt because it is very hot inside the earth surface or, or so on this ground Airy was criticized. On the other hand Pratt was another geologist who explained isostasy and according to Pratt he considered land blocks of varying heights with different density. Airy had uh, explained same density. Pratt explained about different density of various columns. So taller land masses will have lower density while shorter land masses will have denser or will be denser or will have greater density. So there will be an inverse relationship between height and density. Pratt's view can be explained in this manner as you can see in the figure. So there are two columns, one with lesser density that is high with longer length and then more denser will have a shorter length. So when immersed, uh, Pratt used mercury for immersing and then when immersed in mercury, 
the both the columns with varying density floated at the same level at uh, along the line of compensation. So, a line is being demarcated above which equal pressure with varying heights can be seen. He took Pratt took metal bars of varying density with same weight and put it in mercury. They formed a line with all bars and a level of compensation and at a level of compensation all the bars were floating. So, the difference of uh, views uh, between Airy and Pratt can be explained in the figure. First one is for Airy's view and second one is for Pratt's view where a level of compensation is being seen. Now, the difference can be uh, also written, uh, can be seen in the plate. 1, 2, 3, there are differences between Airy and Pratt's view. Uniform density uh, for Airy, then uh, for Pratt's view, there is varying density, then likewise. Now, global isostatic balance, we will be discussing about that. If we see, there is no complete isostatic balance on the earth's surface. Earth is very unstable and the endogenetic forces that take place uh, within the earth surface often disturb the crustal balance. Uh, evidences can be seen in the form of regular earthquakes that take place and then volcanic eruptions that are taking place on the earth surface. Therefore, they signify there is no complete balance on the earth surface and there is need for adjustment. But nature always tries to make an isostatic adjustment on its own. So, exogenetic forces also eliminate differences on uh, the earth surface through weathering, transportation and deposition and in this process isostatic balance is maintained. Endogenetic as well as exogenetic forces both of them maintain isostatic balance. How this is done? For exogenetic and endogenetic forces together, for example, underneath flowage of material that means underneath the earth surface there is flowage or movement of material. Second one is subsidence at place of deposition. Then third is upliftment at place of erosion, the proportion to denudation. So, these are the three ways in which global isostatic balance is maintained. Now, the mechanism of isostatic adjustment can be seen in the picture. Uh, there is transportation, deposition, erosion and then a flowage of material inside the earth surface in the SEMA you can see. Now, we learnt about endogenetic forces and how they transform earth surface, then endogenetic forces, exogenetic forces, isostasy, Aries and Pratt's viewpoint. Now, little bit related to this, all these isostasy and balance and everything, uh, there is, we will be discussing about continental drift. This was the theory that was propounded by Alfred Wegener. According to this theory, entire landmass of globe was together around 280 million years ago and gradually it drifted apart, it broke down and drifted apart horizontally. There was a Pangaea around 280 million years ago and that was a supercontinent and this supercontinent was as I said, uh, it was known as Pangaea. And there was a huge water body surrounding the Pangaea. There was a landmass called Pangaea and huge, huge water body surrounding the Pangaea and that was known as Penthalsa. As you can see in the picture, Pangaea is there, all the landmasses are combined together to form a super uh, uh, continent and that is Pangaea and the whole water body surrounding it was called Penthalsa. Uh, the colored picture you can also see in this. Pangaea and Penthalsa. Now, gradually during 280 to 150 million years ago, what happens? Pangaea broke down latitudinally, that means horizontally and moved apart. The northern part was known as Laurasia or Angara land, while the southern part was known as Godwana land. And in between, when they drifted apart, in between a shallow sea was created between the northern part and the southern part, and that was known as Tethys Sea. Water from Panthalsa seeped in and then this shallow sea was uh, uh, formed in between the northern and the southern uh, landmass or the Laurasia or Angala, Angara land and the um, Gondwana land and this was known as Tethys Sea. As you can see in the uh, picture also, they are moving apart and gradually Tethys was formed. 
Now later what happened, Laurasia and Gondwana land drift further drifted apart and finally drifted to form present day distribution of land and water on the earth's surface. As you can see further there is rifting and drifting of the uh, land masses in the picture you can see that. Now what are the evidences of uh, this continental drift? So whole this drifting is known of continent of the land masses is known as continental drift. And what are the evidences for this drift? We will be dealing with that. First one was Wegener gave number of evidences in support of unification of land masses and geological past which cannot be even negated today. We cannot say that this, this did, did not happen. So there are several evidences. First one is jigs of fit in that eastern coast of South America can be seen identical to western coast of Africa which fits to certain depth in the ocean. So to an extent coastal areas and continental shelves are little modified and uh, through oh, by oceanic waves or through denudation but they can be fit in, they can be jigsaw fit as you can see in the figure the both the parts of Africa and uh, South America can be fit in. Second one is geological similarities of land masses. So mountain system of southern Atlantic Ocean of South America and Africa can be uh, found similar. There are extension of uh, in both the continents. Third one is coal and vegetation evidences. Distribution of coal and vegetation of South America, Africa, India and Australia can be found little similar. It proves that they were together in the past. So classical glacial deposits like a carboniferous period over these land masses resemble each other. So today, but today they lie in different climatic zones. You can see the vegetative and animal uh, remains that were found similar in these continents. Fossil remains can be uh, found similar in these continents. So it shows that maybe they were together in the past. Now another e evidence is the fourth is the evidences from paleomagnetism. What is paleomagnetism? It is the study of direction of pole through ages. So direction or movement of poles through ages. What happens that magnetically susceptible minerals like hematite, phyrotite and magnetite etc. get aligned with magnetic pole of the earth. The recorded solidification of magma during that time can be seen. Periodic changes have occurred during, uh, in this solidification of magma and then uh, formation of poles. So poles have wandered which is not possible for entire earth but a land block. So it, it also shows that some land blocks have shifted from their original places. Another evidence is sea floor spreading. So along the mid Atlantic ridge magma comes out of the uh, sea bed. We studied, uh, we learned earlier also in the earlier session that magma comes out uh, along the mid Atlantic ridge and it gets solidified. So new zones, whenever there is uh, magma coming out, new zones are formed and new sea flows are found along this zone. This process continuing since millions of years ago and there is diversion of continental block and increase in size of Atlantic Ocean. This is known as sea floor spreading. So the sea floor is spreading gradually uh, near in the Atlantic Ocean near the mid Atlantic Ridge. So there is example of shifting of continents also. So explanation of continental drift through sea floor spreading and study of paleomagnetism has uh, supported and this is known as basically this is known as plate tectonics example of sea floor spreading and how it happens can be seen in the figure. So what happens that magma comes out and gradually in the first the lowermost figure you can see the magma is coming out gradually the sea floor is spreading and then uh, in the third picture you can see the still magma is coming out and several layers new layers are formed along this layer. Now we will be learning about plate tectonics. So there is solid mantle and upper crust and this form, these form lithosphere or the rigid block on the earth's surface. So magma is partially molten and then upper solid block is floating above it. 
This molten magma zone is known as asthenosphere, which is 100 to 250 kilometers in depth. It is also known as Moho discontinuity and it is named after a seismologist called Mohorovic. So what plate tectonics explains that the lithosphere is broken into several blocks or that is known as plates. So these plates move over the asthenosphere. There are seven major plates, the names you can see here and in the picture you can see the seven major blocks or plates and few uh, smaller plates also and there are 20 minor plates, few of the examples are given here. Now the, these major and minor plates encompass the whole surface of the earth and this method of way of understanding the land and water distribution on the earth surface is known as plate tectonics. Tectonics make, means movement of plates. So what happens that movement of happens due to internal forces and then this is responsible for distribution of uh, earth surface and then formation of mountain chains and distribution of earthquakes and volcano, volcanoes on the earth surface. What is the mechanism behind plate movement? So we learnt about plate tectonics, so how this movement of plates takes place? Arthur Holmes which, who was a British geologist explained this movement of uh, plates through convectional currents that exist underneath the lithosphere. The, this is the centre of convectional current is not exactly known but it is believed that an average depth of 100 to 250 kilometres this emerge below the earth surface. So what happens that radioactive minerals that are, that are found inside the earth surface they disintegrate and then atomic minerals are formed, formed and the heat is produced during disintegration and this results in melting of surrounding rocks and then inception of or starting of current takes place. So there are two types of currents that is rising current and then falling current. Rising current is also related with divergent activities and falling current is, known, uh, is related with convergence activities. So in the figure you can see rising current and then a falling current. Now rising convection current results in transportation of hot and viscous material upwardly until about 100 kilometers below the surface. Then, then this current gets diverged, split into, the it rises and gets split into two and then uh, it gradually descends and where there is a splitting uh, new surface uh, magma comes out and new surface surface on the earth surface is found, uh, formed. Subduction of mammoth plate in opposite direction takes place when there is uh, submergence and then it happens below the mid oceanic ridge. Other side when, when there is rising of current other side um, here when there is rising the plates move apart. For if we consider this as two plates, so when there is rising of ma magma, the here the plates move apart and on the other side, uh, if we consider this other side, so here there is when the currents move down, so where there is uh, coming together of the plates and then subduction ha happens. Suppose this is a lighter density plate, so uh, it glides over the heavier density plate. So there is subduction takes place. So on one side where there is rising of mag magma, uh, diversion of plates takes place while there is uh, coming down of magma, subduction takes place. There are plate boundaries also, there are different types of plate boundaries will, which we will be dealing with and along this subduction or divergence takes place. Plates are continuously moving and uh, they have relative direction and movement. So based on direction of movement, there are three types of plate boundaries. One is divergent, second is convergent boundary and third one is fracture or transform boundary faults. First one is divergent plate boundary. So where there is rising of magma, divergence of plates takes place. So this is the place of construction also because magma comes out and then it gets solidifies and new uh, uh, features, new surface is found. So this is for example, if these are two plates, so diver when they are moving apart from each other. So this is called this boundary is known as divergent plane, plate boundary. The picture also you can see divergent plate boundary. Then there is second boundary that is convergent plate boundary. Here what happens that magma 
subsides there and then the plate bound uh, the two plates come together and this is convergent plate boundary here what happens if there uh, there is a varying density suppose oceanic plate is little um, greater in density and the continental plate is little lighter in density so suppose for example this is continental this is oceanic plate and this is heavier or more dense and this is uh, lesser dense so what happens the denser plate subsides down of, uh, under the lighter plate that is uh, continental plate okay so this in this manner uh, convergent plate boundary can be seen so one goes down and one uh, glides over it then in the picture you can see different types of convergent uh, plate boundary oceanic continental and then uh, similarly then there are uh, transform plate boundaries where the plates slide past each other parallel to each other so there is no subduction no going down or anything there is they slide past each other in this manner so it's known as zone of preservation in the figure you can see that so plates are not permanent feature they vary in shape and size and they split and they join together tectonic activities according uh, to them they come and go uh, drift apart from each other so continental drift, drift theory was criticized uh, but then uh, there is no other alternative to this theory and therefore but uh, later what happened that uh, material of sea floor and paleomagnetism all these uh, things supported the uh, theory of continental drift plate tectonics also supported that and then uh, it was proved that uh, yes continental drift took place millions of years ago and it is still taking place. So plate tectonics is also related to earthquake and volcanoes etc so there are several plate boundaries where uh, uh, volcanoes and earthquakes takes place you can see in the uh, map here the ring of fire the uh, uh, red ring that you can see along this uh, is the is the where there is uh, uh, earthquake and volcanoes take place the hotspots are also known for this and this is also ring of fire where there is a distribution of uh, earthquakes and uh, volcanoes has taken place these are common places where lots of activities are uh, tectonic activities take place so in this session we learnt about endogenetic forces isostasy global isostatic balance tectonic plates plate tectonics and then uh, evidences of plate movement continental drift theory and then uh, occurrence of or distribution of volcanoes and earthquakes on the earth's surface thank you